This is the reality. Again, I'm Dudley Anderson with The Reality, a half-hour talk show talking about the reality as found in Christ. You know, in the world we face so many different variations of reality, but the scripture says that all these pale into insignificant shadows in comparison to the reality of Jesus. The Reality is produced by Sure Reality Media. SRM is a listener-supported radio ministry, and you can help us reach tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people around the world with the message of the reality of Christ by becoming an SRM ministry partner. Find out more at surereality.net. Today in The Reality, we meet Laura Maxwell. Laura is an ex-spiritualist. After her mother became involved in the spiritualist church, Laura found herself steeped in New Age and the occult. Sadly, her mother began to suffer attacks by evil spirits, which led to her demise. My mother would be taken into trance. She would be assaulted verbally and physically by these spirits. And it was not only these so-called obnoxious spirits doing this, but it was the spirits who had always claimed to be our dead relatives and our spirit guides who were supposed to be looking after us. These aren't really dead people, they're actually evil spirits pretending to be dead people and masquerading as them, and the Bible shows this. After Laura began attending the Spiritualist Church, she began to experience very real spiritual phenomena in her life. But soon she discovered that the spirits she believed were kind, benevolent spirits of dearly parted souls, that they were in fact evil manifestations driven by demons. As God's Word points out in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 14, And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as a spirit of light. Laura soon began to ask questions. In his great love and grace for her, God stepped into her life and revealed the real danger of spiritualism and New Age. Today's interview on the reality was conducted via Skype. I began our conversation by asking Laura to simply tell us her story. Yes, thank you, Dudley. Um, really, as a child, I was always interested in the supernatural, the paranormal, and programs on TV like ghost hunting shows or you know anything to do with trying to, to contact the dead was a thing that always interested me. And, of course... It, it turns out that it was, uh, it did run in the family. My mother had the same interest and she had an uncle who actually was the, the head of a spiritualist church in Ayrshire. So so really, th- psychic phenomena, um, anything like that interested my mother and myself. And like my mother, um, since childhood, I had some psychic experiences, which of course fueled that interest um, and it wasn't until I was a, a preteen that my mother decided to go further. She had already done things like um, watched programs on TV with mediums and psychics um, and, and she had went to the local library and bought books by by psychics too. Um, but when I was a preteen she actually was invited to a spiritualist church by someone and this was a church in Glasgow so of course she jumped at the chance to go and she went along and very soon after that I went along with her too. What impressed you? What did you find there? Well it was pretty obvious to us that that this wasn't you know just some form of trickery or or psychological manipulation. It was obvious to us that the phenomena was very real, the powers that, that were used were very real and Basically, what tended to happen would be that, that the mediums who were performing, if you like, would claim that they were channeling spirits of the deceased. So they would give messages to the congregation. They would pick people out of the congregation and say, I have a message to you from your 
Uncle Bob Smith and he was in the army and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, the information would be so accurate. Now, sometimes they would even go into trance where they allowed spirit entities to come through their body and literally appear. Um, they called that transfiguration session. So, you know, if you were, were in a room and suddenly it looked like your dead grandfather was appe- had appeared in front of you and was talking to you, you would probably be apt to believe it was mm. genuinely him um, because, you know, the phenomena was so so real and so powerful. They also operated in the abilities to supernaturally heal uh, and prophesy about the future. So it just seemed to us that, that the it, it was such a real phenomenon that it had to be what it was claiming to be, and that is the actual dead contacting us. Mm-hmm. Now, I've always been intrigued. Why do they call it the spiritualist church? Surely a church is a place we go to to find Jesus and God. What's the connection with it being a church? Well, of course, they have their own interpretation of the Bible. Um, They don't believe it, basically. You know, when I was a spiritualist, I was also into many New Age uh, belief systems because often that is interlinked with spiritualism. So we regarded really that Christians had it all wrong, um, that that Jesus was in fact just a psychic medium in touch with with the dead. He was a a psychic healer and that he wasn't the saviour. And and we felt that in a sense we had the right, we had the correct church uh, in a sense that God uh, was using mediums uh, and dead people and spirit guides and aliens and all sorts of entities out there and allowing mediums to channel them to the world uh, to save the world, um, not from sin in the sense Jesus did, but to enlighten us and to, to help us progress as as individuals, if you like. So we really felt that we were the true church, you could say. And that's why it was even set out like a church. You know, we would go along on a Sunday, there would be singing, um, the the medium who was on platform may read from a variety of different spiritual books, actually. Um, they would take bits and pieces from different religions, uh, even read from the Bible, maybe. And then the service, if you like, would begin, and that would be when they would begin to channel these entities. That's really interesting. Now, um, obviously, uh uh, Laurie, you came to a place in your life when uh, you found that the true reality isn't a demonic manifestation or a channeling of uh, a deceased spirit, but the true reality can only be found in a right relationship with Jesus. How did that happen? Yes, well, interestingly, um, you know, things did progress and my mother began to become a channeler herself and I certainly went along to development classes because I wanted to become a medium too. Obviously we were having phenomena occur at home that we presumed were our dead relatives um, in the house and even these so-called spirit guides, so-called ascended masters from other planets and so on. Uh, And as I say, it was all very convincing. Of course it was very real phenomena, but You know, really, not just my mother and I, but we also heard of other psychics and mediums and channelers in other spiritualist churches and in other spiritualist meetings and um, fellowships where oftentimes um, so-called evil spirits would manage to get through and and be be violent, be obnoxious and so on, and really quite troublesome. So, of course, you know, the different um, explanations given would be, well, we are dealing with spirits after all, and sometimes an evil spirit can get through. But there would be different methods you could try that could perhaps uh, stop these spirits coming through. Now, that seemed an explanation that was very logical, and we accepted that. However, when such things began to happen to us, um, of course, it was not at all pleasant. And things really eventually got quite out of control. Uh, For example, my mum would be meditating or doing yoga um, when the the spirits would just completely take over her, Hmm. even when she didn't want them to. Hmm. And of course, meditation and yoga, they were two of the key things that um, spiritualists advise us to do because 
they say that those activities open you to the spiritualist realm. Um, so, of course, we obeyed that and did that. And it's true, you know, yoga and meditation does allow one's barriers to go down and does allow spirits to come through, whether or not the, the person doing it realises it or not. And this is what happened. So when my mother would be taken into trance. Um, she would be assaulted verbally and physically by these spirits. And you could understand that in a sense going by the, the spiritualist explanation. However, what began to confuse us was it was not only these so-called obnoxious spirits doing this, but it was the spirits who had always claimed to be our dead relatives and our spirit guides who were, you know, supposed to be looking after us. Mm -hmm. So this began to, to confuse us and we would tell the, the spiritualists at the church and of course they were very lovely people and they tried their best to help us but unfortunately it did not help. And around about this time I was now in second year at university and I met a Christian lady and I, I became friendly with her quickly and told her the situation and you know she said to me you know, it, it, these aren't really dead people. They're actually evil spirits pretending to be dead people and masquerading as them. And the Bible shows this. The Bible shows that when someone's dead, they either go to heaven or hell. So they can't come back as a ghost anyway. Mm -hmm. So at first I thought, well, that's the craziest thing I ever heard. But things progressed. My mother, unfortunately, you know, the spirits were taking over, over her mm -hmm. so much that she went to the to her GP and, and asked for sleeping tablets. And the GP asked why. My mother explained. And, of course, the doctor said, well, I don't believe in spirits. I believe you're schizophrenic, hearing voices and, and seeing apparitions. Mm -hmm. And for your own safety, I need to um, admit you to the psychiatric hospital. Wow. And, of course, this happened. Now, just to interject, Dudley, that was... 20 plus years ago now and in all of that time and before then I have heard of many others who have ended up in the psychiatric hospital because of such spiritual attack so that's not at all unique and of course my mother went in there sadly and that was quite traumatic for us all you know but but then I, I began to listen to my Christian friend and, and and more and more things began to make sense and I thought well I've been a new ager, a spiritualist, a person who these people do tend to be very open to any type of spiritual belief. You know, we would borrow from Hinduism, we would borrow from Buddhism. You know, we were very open to all religions, really. Mm -hmm. And it suddenly struck me, why not uh, be open to Jesus Christ as being the saviour? Why why just believe he was a medium um, or so on? I should really investigate this because this is um, important. And also because I was at my wit's end, clearly, and, and really needed help. So she invited me to her church. Her It was a Pentecostal church. I went along, and um, the, the Christian who was preaching, it wasn't so much what he said, but it was more just a sense in the atmosphere. Something was very different here. I felt a, a, a purity. I felt a love, and I felt a strength. I just... I felt all these wonderful things that I hadn't felt in anything supernatural so far. Wow. Um, and at first I thought, well, could this just be a really evolved spirit guide, you know, <laughs> um, mm. that I was feeling? Because, of course, I still had all the New Age ideas. But mm. I was certainly beginning to um, think about Jesus more uh, and question uh, the reality of him and the reality of what I was and my mother were involved in. And um, what happened was that night I went home and the spirits in my home were, were, were quite furious that I had went to the Christian church and they were attacking me. So I literally kept the light on all night and was rather frightened. And I found a, a Bible that I probably got from school, the Gideons or something like that. And I just held on to it really and prayed you know if God is real if Jesus Christ is the saviour and if, if spiritualism is actually a deception please show me and please show me what to do mm. now um, and I was attacked and we won't go into it because this is, is a family show but, it, but you know when you do hear of poltergeist activities 
the phenomena is real, although I would uh, class them as demons or fallen angels, as the Bible says, says, and I wouldn't use the word poltergeist. However, the next day, now remember I prayed that prayer, the next day the doorbell rang and there stood, a, she called herself a, a Roman gypsy. She was a psychic and she would visit the neighborhood maybe once a year to read your fortune and that type of thing. So I opened the door. I forgot to say, Dudley, during the night I kept seeing her face. I kept thinking of her and wow. I wondered, why am I thinking of her? Mm-hmm. Um, she appeared at my door and she basically said, I've become a born again Christian. The Lord, the, the Holy Spirit impressed me to come visit you today and to say to you the place that you were at last night, you know, holds the answers. And, and basically she said, you're now about to find the truth and begin to walk in your destiny. Um, she said, I'm no longer psychic anymore. The abilities I had um, were from demons and Jesus Christ set me free from that. And yeah, so that was a bit of a jaw dropper for me that morning. That's amazing. And how God just orchestrated that. Uh, God knows, doesn't he, uh, mm-hmm. Laura? When, when, when we're in situations like this, God knows what's going on in our lives. You know, that I take as such an encouragement. Even when we are so far from him and his love for us extends beyond those barriers, he just sends the right people at the right time because he knows, doesn't he? Yes, absolutely. Uh, indeed, you know, it had to be someone like that. It had to be someone who was an ex-medium or ex-witch or someone who came to me. If it had been another... Um, Christian who had never done these things, I, I probably would not have been quite so open to mm-hmm. hear mm-hmm. what they had to say. Um, and it was very shortly after this, perhaps a day or so later, that I did have a, a revelation. I did finally see that, that Jesus Christ was the Savior and that unfortunately um, we had been deceived by these fallen angels under Satan's control who had masqueraded, just like the Bible says um, in, in 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen, And no wonder for Satan himself masquerades as if an angel of light. And they had uh, clearly deceived us. So I did give my heart to the Lord. Um, and, you know, I was thrilled because finally I, I had found the truth. Finally, I had found God. And, um, and I knew that this I just felt that this was finally the answer after all the years of looking at different religions within the whole new age um, you know uh, realm of accepting all religions accepting all gods and that type of rhetoric to finally come to the true God was just amazing You're listening to The Reality with me Dudley Anderson talking to Laura Maxwell an ex-spiritualist The Reality is produced by Shure Reality Media. SRM is a listener-supported radio ministry, and you can support us by becoming an SRM ministry partner by going off to the website surereality.net and click on Become a Ministry Partner. Well, Laura Maxwell grew up in a home open to the phenomenon of the occult and the New Age. She and her mother began to attend a spiritualist church. Her mother sadly became demonized by evil spirits and ended up in a psychiatric ward in hospital. Laura began questioning the reality of what she was experiencing. And God, in his love and grace, stepped into her life and led her to meet a Christian woman who spoke God's word into her heart. Soon she discovered that spiritualism and New Age and the occult were fake nuances of hope and peace and love presented by Satan, the father of lies. The Holy Spirit of God drew people into her life until she finally repented of her old life and gave her heart to the one true God. Well, we know that the devil is the opponent of God's love and God's grace and God's purposes for our lives. The Bible calls him Satan. Satan literally means the enemy. He is the enemy of God's purposes, the enemy of righteousness, and the enemy of holiness. Satan is a fallen angel, separated from the righteousness and the holiness of God. He is evil in all his guises. So after Laura gave her life to Jesus Christ, I was wondering whether Satan just left her alone to follow her new life. No, of course, you know, the Bible is clear right through that, that uh, you know, we are living in a fallen world, and therefore we, we are in a spiritual warfare, um, we are in a battle, whether we realize it or not. Mm-hmm. And certainly, um, I suppose it would be rather naive to just assume as soon as you become born again, all your problems end, because that's not true. 
and certainly the spirits that that I had invited into my life, they were still there. Um, you you know, if you, if you look through the Bible, particularly in the New Testament, when you see the disciples and the apostles, um, and Jesus Himself, obviously, they would cast out demons from people, um, and that's still the case today. You know, I had invited these spirits into my life. And for example, some mediums will literally channel spirits through their body and mm. speak out through their mouth. So naturally, those spirits are in that person. Therefore, when a person comes to Jesus, they have to be cast out of that person. They don't just automatically, you know, vanish. Uh, and therefore, myself, I did require um, what we could call the deliverance ministry. I did require other Christians to cast those demons out of me and it's very interesting how important crucial this is actually because I'll interject here what happened to my dear mother she got out of the psychiatric hospital and she went home but at that time um, the, the, the church I had joined was a very new church the pastor was a new pastor uh, no one in that church um, had experience of dealing with um, you know, someone from the old cult or casting demons out of a person. Mm. So they just presumed that my mum, my mum had accepted Jesus into her heart shortly after me. So they just assumed, well, Rita is uh, is a Christian now, so she can't have any uh, demonic influence, you know, around her at all. She can't be in any kind of a warfare at all. She probably is just mentally ill. So my mother was left, if you like, in that state. And because she did not receive that um, exorcism, if you like, the, the, the demons still tormented her and still harassed her. And tragically, like many others have done, by the way, tragically, this led to her suicide. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yes. I'm so sorry to hear that. And I guess that's why I do emphasize that... Um, you know, when we look at the New Testament and when we see Jesus and the apostles healed the sick and they did miracles and they cast out demons, that that is actually really important. And um, it's something that, that the church, if we did more of it today, then I believe more people would be healed and there would be less people like my mother taking their life. Mm -hmm. Well, Jesus taught on that, didn't he? He said that um, you can cast a demon out of an individual and uh, mm -hmm. And they'll they'll leave, but they'll come back and they'll find that house, so to speak, clean, swept, and and ready and open. And he goes away and he brings back hordes more and 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 replaces himself in that life once again. So the individual like yourself, you need to fill your life with Jesus, with the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. Am I right? Oh, absolutely. Uh, uh, and as you say, that the repentance involves. Not just saying prayers of repentance and saying to Jesus, I'm sorry, please cleanse me, but of a complete turning away from that lifestyle. And most people do want to turn away from that lifestyle, especially if they've been traumatized like we were by spirits. Some people I've heard um, still have a, a desire for it or a temptation for certain things of the occult, even after they've come to Jesus and, you know, I advise them, obviously, we have to be patient and kind with people who confide in us. Um, but I advise them to, to obviously throw out everything, burn everything if mm. you can, just mm. like they did in the book, book of Acts. Um, but do, you know, have deliverance ministry. Um, Acts 16, we know that, that the disciples cast the, the spirits of divination out the fortune teller girl. Um, so it's a real, a real phenomena. Really seek to live your life uh, blameless before the Lord. Holiness uh, is important. Obedience is important. And, and as you grow closer and closer to Jesus, the temptations for these things will dwindle, just as the temptation for anything in life goes uh, as we become stronger followers of Jesus and more obedient to him. Amen. Spot on. Well, the reality is, the scripture says in Revelation, that we've overcome him, that is the devil and Satan and all these hordes of darkness. We've overcome them by the blood of the Lamb, Jesus, and the word of our testimony. Larry, you've testified to the grace of God and the deliverance of the Lord in your life. I'd like to ask you, if you will, uh, perhaps somebody listening in right now finds himself in a very similar situation to you. Would you take a moment now just to pray for that person? 
Yes, thank you, Totally, I will be honored. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for the dear listeners and especially those who this is ringing true with, with them. And Lord, we ask that you draw that person ever closer to you. Jesus, if they don't know you, we ask that they would ask you into their lives. They would become born again and they would begin to follow you as their precious Savior. Lord, show that person how much you love them, you adore them. You want the best for them and you want them healed. And Lord, lead that person into full freedom, full deliverance from all demonic spirits in and around them, down their family line too and everything they've been involved with, Lord. Give them a brand new life. And we thank you, Lord, you have a good plan for these people in Jesus' precious name. If you prayed that prayer with us, we'd love to hear from you. Please do drop me an email, dudley at surereality.net. Again, if you prayed that prayer with Laura, we'd love to hear from you. Please send me an email, dudley at surereality.net. As we finish off our talk with Laura, I asked her to give us just a little bit of information about her website. If anyone wants to read of similar testimonies and so on, they can check out my blog, Our Spiritual Quest. Dot com and it also has my TV interviews, radio interviews that, um, you know, on the same topics. What is that address again? OurSpiritualQuest.com And now thanks to Laura Maxwell for sharing her life story with us today in The Reality. To contact Laura, please send me an email at Dudley, D-U-D-L-E-Y, at surereality.net. If you would like to find Jesus, if you would like to have a right relationship with God as Laura has, and as we heard about today, then please write to me. I'd love to answer your questions. Dudley at surereality.net. Email address Dudley at surereality.net. The South Hour Talk Show, The Reality, is produced by Sure Reality Media. SRM is supported by its listeners. You can help us produce quality Christian radio programs that are reaching hundreds of thousands of people worldwide through online radio, through terrestrial radio, and indeed through these podcasts by going off to the website surereality.net and clicking on Become a Ministry Partner. Partner with us in sharing the reality of the gospel of Jesus worldwide. You can make a one-off donation or become a regular monthly contributor. Again, the website is surereality.net please click on become a ministry partner well it's been wonderful to be with you once again today in the reality do join me again next time from me dudley to you keep walking in the sure reality of christ (laughs) 